This video is about uh, resonance, so we're going to look a bit more at resonance, but we're also going to introduce this new idea of damping. Okay, we're going to start off by looking at when resonance is a problem, and then we're going to look at what damping means. So just a couple of classic kind of uh, physics-y videos. First one here is um, how to break a wine glass using the idea of resonance. Okay, so what you do is you play with a loudspeaker of note which is exactly the same frequency as the natural frequency of vibration of the wine glass okay the amplitude gets bigger and bigger and that's what smashes the wine glass okay that's maybe not the biggest problem in the world um perhaps a more practical problem was the tacoma narrows bridge uh built in 1938 but sadly fell down in 1940 okay i'm going to skip a few bits of this video but hopefully it'll give you the ideas so this is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It was a suspension bridge built in Washington State in uh, northwest USA. And um, opened in 1938 to big uh, celebrations. What they found after a while was if the wind blew, then it would start to oscillate rather dramatically at times. Um, and this was a well-known problem to the bridge, but they didn't really know what to do about it. Okay, it's amazing how flexible some of those materials are that the bridge can do that and the next day the wind's blown at a different speed you can just drive across the bridge uh, until one day um, that went a bit wrong this guy actually parked his car on the bridge and ran off the bridge um, famously I think went back to get his dog out of the car um, but the key thing to understand from a physics point of view here is that the wind is pulsing up this valley, I think because of the, of the nature of the valley that it's in. The wind would pulse up the valley with a frequency that was equal to the natural frequency of oscillation of this bridge. So ever after this bridge, people, uh, engineers, became much more aware of the need to think about the natural frequency of vibrations of structures and to see whether or not there was any driving frequency which might have the same value which would cause this kind of uh, problem to happen. Okay, eventually, as you can imagine, what happened was that this uh, the wind just happened to hit the right frequency. So this oscillation got bigger and bigger and bigger. And oops, if I go back a little bit. Okay, eventually, obviously, the materials that are in here can't cope with uh, this sort of continual deformation. So in 1940, what happened was the whole bridge just fell down okay so that's the Tacoma Narrows Bridge a very ex uh, famous example of a disastrous piece of engineering okay where they'd not really considered enough the possibility of resonance but very helpful to physics teachers okay here's one more example this is the Millennium Bridge now you might have thought that if that happened in 1940 by the time they built the Millennium Bridge, um, which was originally designed to be open for the year 2000, um, they would have considered this. Okay, but there weren't big winds blowing up the river, and the natural frequency of oscillation was fairly high. Okay, the only driver possibly here was people walking across it. But obviously people will just stroll across it at their own speed at all different rates. So they thought there was not really a problem here with resonance. Okay, but interestingly, what they found is that, of course, at the start, loads of people wanted to walk across it, and it would just start to vibrate a little bit like this. Okay, and then this is quite a complex problem, really, because what happens is this initially, the bridge is the driver. But what starts to happen is, you can see it already a little bit, I think, here, the people just naturally sway with the bridge. First of all, the bridge is driving the oscillation of the people. But then, of course, there's all these people. You can see it really well in this photo. It looks like they've kind of had some kind of mass bridge protest party and they've decided to try to make the bridge wobble. Okay, but what's actually happening is the bridge is already wobbling a bit and that just makes these people naturally walk in step with the vibration of the bridge. But then, of course, these people will increase the size of this vibration. Okay, so eventually they had to close the bridge because they were worried that this vibration would eventually cause the bridge to collapse. But the solution to this all right, in the end, was to put big dampers in on the sides of this bridge to change its natural frequency. Obviously, there's a fairly um, narrow range of frequencies of, that people can actually walk at. They tend to be sort of somewhere around maybe one hertz. So if you can make the natural frequency of the bridge um, much lower than that, okay, then you're not going to get this problem. 
Okay, but it was interesting that, you know, even in the year 2000, it hadn't really occurred to the engineers who built this bridge that resonance was possibly a problem of people walking across the bridge. Second bit of this lesson is about damping. So damping is a force which tries to re um, remove energy from the system, okay? So in most systems, say for example with a pendulum, there's air resistance that's creating a small damping force, okay? In some situations, you've got much bigger damping force. Okay, usually the bigger the amplitude gets, the faster things move in, the bigger the damping force becomes, so the damping force will increase. Um, and what you get is a system of equilibrium. Okay, if you think of this in terms of energy, the driver is putting energy in, okay, the damping force is taking the energy out, and eventually those two energies become equal, and um, the overall energy of the system stays the same, because whatever energy you're putting in is coming out by the damping, okay? Some systems have a small damping force, we call that light damping, okay, or lightly damped systems. Some are medium, some are heavily damped systems, okay. If you've got, for example, a car suspension, what you really want is to take that energy, so the spring bounces up and down as you go over a bump, but you want that energy to be taken out of the spring as quickly as possible, so that's a heavily damped system. Okay, the force of damping always tries to reduce the motion, so if you think of air resistance as a classic example, the damping force is acting in the opposite direction to the motion. So we can go back to our little uh, animation from FET to have a look at this. So I've set this up already, so it's on 5 kilograms. Remember like we did last lesson, 0.71 hertz. So it's at its resonant frequency. The driving frequency of this is equal to the natural frequency of the spring. Okay, I've got damping down here as low as it'll go. Okay, you'll notice the oscillation just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, eventually at some point... The little bit of damping there is is taking out the energy I'm putting in. If I put in medium damping, okay, then that will die away slowly until the a low is still at resonance because the driving frequency still e still equals the natural frequency. Okay, then the amplitude is smaller and a very high damping. Okay, again it'll just take a second to die away, but the amplitude is very small even though I'm at resonance. We're taking so much energy out of the system, okay, that the oscillation doesn't get any bigger. We can put that onto a graph, okay. So here our solid line here is the one we did last time. So this is light damping, okay. We get a very big oscillation at resonance, okay. Remember here's this line here is the natural frequency. So when the natural frequency equals the driving frequency, okay, we always get our maximum um, amplitude there, but that maximum amplitude becomes lower and lower the more damping we put in the system.